Hello and welcome to HR Talk, People Management's new weekly discussion about the biggest stories in the HR world. I'm Michelle Stevens, and this week we'll be talking about the Hutton Report into Public Sector Pensions. It's recommended an end to final salary schemes and the introduction of new plans based on the employee's career average earnings. I'm joined by James Brockett, PM's news editor, to discuss the issue. So James, which public sector workers will be most affected by these proposed changes? Well, they'll all be affected, of course, um, and it's important to note that the government haven't actually responded to Hutton's recommendations yet, so a lot of the nitty-gritty in terms of contribution rates, accrual uh, rates and so on, um, it's still to come, and there, there may be further distinctions there. Um, but just talking in the broadest possible terms, um, career average as opposed to final salary um, is going to affect um, largely people in the middle, because lower paid workers uh, will find that um, the career average scheme still results in um, a similar type of pension in the end uh, to what they would have got on the final salary. Um, and if you take senior staff, uh, particularly those at the end of their careers, they will have a lot of accrued benefits already, um, and of course those will be protected. Um, so it's those people in the middle that will really be affected the most by career average. Um, and whereas under the final salary scheme they might have been hoping to get one last promotion before they retire in order to bump up their pension, that won't really be a factor on the career average. average. So that's what I'd highlight, I think. We've already seen that unions aren't happy about this. Is it likely to lead to strike action? Well, I think it's very likely indeed. Um, the unions, particularly PCS and Unison, uh, but all of the public sector unions really, have already said they're very upset about this. Um, and there is evidence that pensions is going to be the one issue that will bring all of the discontent in the, in the public sector to a head. Um, and so we could well see um, thousands of people on the streets um, about pensions in, in the year to come. Um, although I think that will not happen until the government uh, respond and we really get down to um, how, how much of a hard line they're, they're going to take on the issues. Also, ominously, um, universities have actually already been striking on the issue of um, career average pensions. Um, what the res what's being done to the university superannuation scheme um, is fairly similar to, to what um, Hutton's recommended overall for public sector, um, and that has actually resulted in a strike um, in the week just gone. Um, so if that's any foretaste of what's to come, um, then we could be in for quite industrial relations strife. Employee morale must be very low in the public sector at the moment, and this will only add to that. So what can HR do on this issue to help matters? I think it's really a matter of communication, particularly communicating the value of pensions. Um, even after these changes, as proposed by Hutton, um, are implemented, uh, pensions in the public sector will still be a, a very strong benefit um, and potentially a very strong uh, recruitment and retention tool. But pensions are maybe underappreciated at the moment. So there was some research from the CIPD uh, on the issue which found that 59% of employees wouldn't even be able to tell you the contributions that their employer were making towards their pensions. Um, so I think even after the changes are made, pensions are a really strong benefit and it's down to HR to make that clear um, and to make sure that pensions continue to be valued in the future. Thank you, James. That's all for this week. We'll look out for more on the topic in April's issue of People Management. And keep up to date with the latest HR news at www.peoplemanagement.co.uk. Until next time, take care.